And it's another hot and humid day here where I live, and we're back with the uh, weirdest gas tank, at least that I've ever seen. Off camera, I got all this metal separated, gave it the Rust-Oleum paint job after spending an entire day cleaning and degreasing it, and then spending another entire day just painting it. Look how fantastic that looks. There's some touch-ups that have to be done. And it's not perfect, but I mean, you're not gonna see any of this once it's under the car. And the point of it is that it protects from corrosion. Oh, there was also this. This gas tank strap is built in here. It was welded right here. I had to drill this weld out, and that's why the zip tie is holding this tank strap right here. That was all one piece, and uh, if you ever have to replace this strap, you got to drill out that weld anyway. And I don't have a welder or any welding skill, so I can't weld that back together. But, I mean, the bolt for the gas tank strap goes right in here where the zip tie is. So once it's all back in there, that little weld ain't going to matter. Uh, I was playing with my new pop rivet gun, and I learned a couple of things. A uh, $20 pop rivet gun is uh, kind of uh, funky to work with. I had to fight with it a little bit. And another thing is, I, fi I was practicing with it fixing this side and I applied the I had this thing flipped over I applied the rivets from this side and I realized the smooth side is the one you apply it from and the other side mushrooms out and sticks up like this so in order to do all these rivets I drilled out in the middle there's five along here here and then four here not all these some of these were drain holes they didn't have rivets but um I want to apply them from the top side down since the belly of the tank is going to sit here I don't want that sticking up, rubbing against the tank, causing any problems. And then I am going to shoot some paint over these to protect them with uh, Rust-Oleum, of course. So, I'm going to get to it. from the middle and I'm working my way out that way in my mind it all stays lined up I guess I, I don't know it makes sense in my mind you shouldn't have to fight with the gun to get the little shanks out just you shouldn't have to. snap. Things shouldn't be that difficult, should they? Shouldn't have to do this every time. Get the old shank out, it should just come through, right? I don't know. Let me know if I'm doing this wrong in the comments. Thank you. 
tool is doing good at first, I think maybe it's losing its bite now. Oh, come on. You're not supposed to do that. Funny, it still fits in the hole. That one didn't go right. Hmm. This one. This one right here is a little wiggly. You can't really see it, but it's not as tight. All the other ones came in tight. This one didn't tighten in. Hmm. Maybe I ought to hammer it back out. I think I figured it out. I gotta make sure I pull it up all the way. I still, shanks don't come out very easy. Yeah, that seems to do it. not that bad of a tool, it's just, uh, you just gotta manipulate the handle all the way up and down. I accidentally over drilled this hole, so I gotta use a next size up rivet, which is the same one I was using on the bottom side. See, I had to put a clamp here to sandwich this metal together so it wouldn't stay on its own. Come on. I'm sure. Scared Eddie boy here with all the loud noise. I let him in. But there you go. Fresh rivets, just need some paint. And this tank is, uh, well, at least the metal shell and the plastic are back together. I still need to clean up the fuel sending unit here. And, uh, I can get a new one of these, I'm going to order that, and I still, the fuel hoses are on their way. This is the vent valve for the uh, vent hose. 
It, um, the one that was in it was fine, but the grommet's all broken and deteriorated. So I'm going to get another one, hoping I get another grommet. But um, I didn't realize I never took the time to explain why I'm doing this to the gas tank. I um, It was part of that problem, I said before, where the car would just... Uh, where you'd be driving like normal, and once it's warmed up, it would randomly just bog down and want to stall out. I, uh, I still think it's an electrical problem, though, because it was like that, like I said before, the old IT method, you try turning it off and back on again, because turning the key off and back on is the only thing that'll get it running again once it starts doing that. But I wanted to eliminate the gas tank as a possibility, and I was probably right in assuming that it's been sealed up since the factory, so I just wanted to get it out and get an assessment of it and the fuel lines, the fuel sending unit, all that stuff. And it turned into a whole restoring of the uh, of the tank assembly here. Kind of went a little overboard, but oh well. Hopefully I won't have to worry about it again. Now here's something I don't do often enough. New hardware, specifically bolts for that drive shaft I'm about to put back in. As it turns out, these bolts are just on the shelf at my local parts store, the Dorman Help section. It's a pretty standardized Ford thing, and they come complete with thread locker. Please excuse the windiness. It's kind of, I don't know if the mic's picking it up, but it's kind of a windy day. Well, this is new to me. I got water dripping out from under my floorboard as soon as I jacked the car up to put this drive shaft back in. And it's coming from here. See, I jacked the car up and it rolled in from somewhere back there, it looks like. And now it's coming out of the floor. Well, it's going to be fun to figure out where that's coming from. I bet it has something to do with that rear window, though. Look, I put this glove on the end of the transmission to uh, catch any fluid that came out, and uh, and damn thing filled right up. And it looks like it's even leaking out a little bit there on the pinky. But, um... It was a clean glove, so I'm just going to take it and pour it back into the transmission. Drive shift back in.
Oh, a little bit of coolant is getting out of the heater core now. Oh, well. I guess that's unavoidable. Look, it's like a little shot glass of coolant. So in case you were wondering, this is the transmission dipstick tube. I had to, it helps to get it out of the way to do these. There we go. All right, well, been a few days since I did any work on the Cougar. I kind of halted progress on that because something kind of came up, something every now and then falls into your lap at makes you reconsider everything you're currently doing at least when it comes to a project car through circumstances i am now wanting to get rid of my 93 cougar here that's right i'm putting it up for sale i'm giving up on working on this thing sometimes you come across something that just makes you reconsider everything you're doing and when I was looking for parts for this car, I decided I'm no longer working on it because I now have this. This is my new car. In searching for a parts car, I came across this gem, a 1997 Mercury Cougar. It was advertised as a car that would start but not run. It was one state away and me and my brother went to work on it for a couple of hours and we figured out what and got it running again and it is not running correctly it's got some issues obviously but replace some rotten vacuum lines and check this out oh i guess i need the keys key It keeps surging and bogging down, but it's running. It drove all the way home. As you see, the RPMs keep going up and down, it keeps surging. It was sitting for a year. It had year old gas in it. Uh, first thing I did was get it to a gas station and I threw like five gallons of premium in it. And it's running a little better, but I'm working on getting that gas gauge down and I want to see what it does when I fill it with premium. Full, clean premium that's not been sitting, turned probably to varnish. All right, let me shut this off. And then, after that, I'm going to give it the basic tune-up, oil change, all that stuff. Then i got to get it through inspection so I can get the title in my name and all that stuff. Uh, and, uh, I mean, but check this thing out. It needs a detail. It's not perfect, but it is all there. And this one has a sunroof. 93 doesn't. My Scion does. Um, I can get out and look. 
I like these wheels. 16 inch alloy. Easier to clean and rear wheel discs. The 93 has drums. And spoiler, as we all know, just adds performance. But yeah, and you will not believe I stole this thing at 450 bucks. That's right. The guy only wanted $450 for this car that he advertised as a starting but not running. And the only thing wrong with it was down here. Let me see if right there is the purge valve. Let me see if I can. Okay, focus. That's the purge valve. The vacuum lines to it were absolutely rotten, crumbling, no good at all. Also, up here to the PCV valve was rotten and this little hose here replaced all that. Guess what? This thing stayed running. And I can't wait to get work on it some more. There's a few other issues other than the surging and the bogging. The OBD2 port also does not work on this thing. We tried plugging it in, pulling some codes before we got started. Sorry, car going by. And um, the code reader could not tell us anything. It said could not communicate with car. So we're going to have to figure that out because I'm pretty sure it won't pass inspection if it can't plug into OBD2. Um, but yeah, everything is there. It's still got cat converters. It's still got pretty much the full exhaust. I'll fucking show you the underside. The most important thing, this thing is absolutely rust free. Yeah, I know that little piece of the fuel filter is hanging down. But you go around, look at this. It is clean. The rockers are absolutely straight. And even... This metal here, in front of the wheel well, not rusted. This looks like rust, but it's actually just dirt. I promise you, look, it's scratching off. That's another thing, I gotta get this thing to the car wash. Let's see how well. It's got this really nice patina, I really like that. That patina really doesn't bother me. I'm just gonna leave it that way, I think. You know, I never had a red car before. I'm not crazy about red, but this patina really fits it, especially for a 97, 26-year-old car. So I'm going to end this here. Be looking forward to my new project here. As for the 93, I am putting it up for sale as a non-running parts slash project car. If you live in the Delaware area and are interested, um, I'll message me. First $500 takes it. It's got a good 302 in it, which would make a good rebuilder or try to fix it up yourself and only need a few parts to get running. But I'll just make that it for now. I'll catch you on the next one.